if you do the exercises on, on years of schooling, straight years of schooling, we've made dramatic progress. So how come hasn't it had an impact on, um, on inequality? Uh, well, partly it's about the skills twist. So part, it's, not all of it's about the quality of schooling. I'll come back to, to the quality now. Uh, you, first, you have to recognize that this, the fact that the demand for labor has turned towards people with complete secondary or more, complete secondary schooling or more, that's quite a high bar. That would be like in Brazil. That, that would be a debilitating bar, given the success story of the increase in schooling, because their schooling has only gone up to about seven and a half years on average in Brazil. Uh, in South Africa, complete secondary is 12 years of schooling. Governments pushed us into the zone of 10 on average. So there's the demand for labor side. But then, obviously, uh, if, you, if you're really giving people quality secondary schooling, you would expect them to be numerate and, and literate. And the, the, you know, for, so, for many people around Africa anyway, those are the skills that you need to somehow do something off your own bat the informal sector we spoke about before, or self-employment more generally. Or, or you're really a productive, um, uh, you're an unskilled worker, sure, but that can mean so many different things. If you really value, value to some small enterprise, you would be hired. So there are legitimate concerns about the quality of schooling in the sense of not really following through on the social project of empowering people, capacitating them. Uh, th th there is this debate in South Africa as to whether we skill constraint in a grow skill constrained in a growth sense of of that word, um, and uh, c certainly the the so-called Harvard group that was involved in South Africa in the late two thousands studying this decided that that wasn't a very useful notion because we, whilst we do need more engineers and we do need you know, more highly skilled uh, technical people. Uh, we do have quite good universities and, and high-end training, and probably we could sort that out without a huge policy focus on it. Um, the, the universities are focusing on it, and we can sort out the, uh, the skills constraint by giving it detailed attention. Um, they weren't convinced that we were actually constrained, in a like this is holding up growth, uh, sense of the of the, the, the word. Uh, a lot of skilled South Africans are actually leaving the country for a while on, after university. So that, that's a potential solution to the problem that doesn't require you know, new layers of education, for example. Where we are skill constrained, undoubtedly, in the country is with artisans. Uh, the artisan, artisanal si system was decimated in the country. And we're trying to rebuild that. That's a focus on what's called further education and training rather than universities and really, really top-end um, skills. And there we've got a lot of work to do. We've just started regenerating these further education and training colleges, which we basically crushed. We, we, we just stopped training nurses and teachers, for example, in, in, en masse, but on in quality as well. Um, and th that's proved to be immensely constraining to us, but quite hard to turn around. It's not easy to start training uh, quality teachers that can really have the impact on literacy and numeracy that we need.